How is flipping a coin related to this? Surprisingly, they are related. In this short lesson, I'm going to teach you about something called the binomial theorem. Let's start with the coin. First of all, let me ask you a question. What's the probability, if you flip the coin once, of getting a heads? Well, since there are two sides, the probability is 1 out of 2, meaning you get one head out of two possible outcomes, heads or tails. Okay, what's the probability of getting one head if you flip the coin twice? In this case, there aren't two outcomes anymore. You could get heads and then heads, heads and then tails, tails and then heads, or tails and then tails. Out of all these outcomes, there are two possibilities where you get one head. So the probability is 2 out of 4, which is again 1 half. Let's do one more. What's the probability of getting a head if you flip the coin three times? Now there are eight possible outcomes. Think about it like this. We flip the coin three times. In the first slot, there are two options. In the next slot, there are another two options, heads or tails. And in the final slot, Again, two options, heads or tails. So the total number of possibilities would be 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the third, which is 8. And you see that there are 8 possible outcomes right here. Out of those, there are 3 possibilities where we get heads once. So the probability that we get one head after flipping the coin 3 times is 3 out of 8. This was all relatively easy, but what if I asked you, What's the probability of getting three heads if you flip the coin five times? That is a lot harder. But I'm going to show you something really cool. This is called Pascal's triangle. Can you figure out the pattern? What do you think should go in these next spaces? If you guessed four, six, and four, you're correct. So what are we doing? We're adding the numbers that are next to each other to make the numbers in the next row. What does this have to do with finding the probability of getting three heads if you flip the coin five times? Well, check this out. Remember that the probability of getting one head after flipping the coin three times was three-eighths, which if we dissect this number, this is three, the number of ways we can get one head, divided by the total number of outcomes, which was two to the third, since there were two possibilities, heads or tails, and we flipped the coin three times. That's the same as this. 3 times the probability of getting one head times the probability, then, of getting two tails. And guess what? This number here is found in this triangle. Mind-blowing, right? So basically, this row right here corresponds to the coefficient right here when we're calculating the probability. There's one way we can get three heads. Just heads, heads, heads. There are three ways we can get one head, and they're written here. There are also three ways we can get one tail. Similarly to this, we would have tails, heads, 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 tails, heads, and heads, heads, tails. And then finally, there's one way we can get three tails. Tails, tails, tails. This is a pretty complicated concept, so let's keep practicing. This row corresponds to flipping the coin four times. So this is the number of ways we can get all heads, or all tails, it doesn't really matter which direction we're going. This is the number of ways we can get three heads and correspondingly one tail. This is the number of ways we can get two heads and correspondingly two tails. Because remember, we're flipping the coin four times. Can you guess what this is? There are four ways we can get one head and three tails. Notice that this triangle is symmetrical. There's a 4 here and a 4 here. We can get 3 heads and 1 tail in the same number of ways that we can get 1 head and 3 tails. This is called Pascal's triangle. Okay, so let's get back to our original problem. What's the probability that we'll get 3 heads if we flip the coin 5 times? Well, let's write out the next row. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. There's one way we can get 0 heads or even five heads, same thing. Five ways we can get one head, 10 ways we can get two heads and three tails, and 10 ways we can get three heads and two tails. Again, it doesn't matter which order we go, we'll get 10 either way. So there are 10 ways, and how many outcomes are there? Two to the fifth. 
because there are two possibilities, heads and tails, and we flip the coin five times. Now, I don't want to confuse you too much, but let's write it out like this for a second. That's the same as the probability of getting heads to the third power, because we get three heads, times one half to the power of the number of tails we have. Now, the probability of getting a heads is one half, but what if the probability was like one fourth? Then instead of one half here, we'd put one fourth. And likewise, if the probability of getting a heads is one fourth, then the probability of getting tails has to be three fourths because the probabilities have to add to one. And this is basically the binomial theorem. The number of ways you can get your desired output, in this case three heads, times the probability of desired output to the power of the number of desired output, we'll just call this k. In our example, k equals three. And finally, times the probability of the alternative output to the power l, where l is the number of that alternative output that we get. In our example, it's two, because we flip the coin five times and we get three heads. So in that case, the number of tails would be two. And remember that this probability plus this probability has to equal one. Okay, now what does this have to do with something like this? Three x plus five y to the fifth, let's say. Well, have you ever foiled, I really hate that term, x plus two times x plus one. Basically, FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last, but forget about that. You don't need to know that. All you need to know is that you multiply each term by each term. It's like this. If this distance here is x and this distance is two, then this total distance is x plus two. And if this distance is x and this is one, this total distance is x plus one. When we multiply these two binomials, we get essentially the area of this rectangle that's formed by these sides. So think of it like area. So the area of this part's gonna be x squared. The area here is two x, here x, and here two. So the total area is x squared plus two x plus x plus two, which is x squared plus three x plus two. Okay, but that's just multiplying this by this. What if you had to multiply by another three binomials, which is kind of what this is? You're multiplying three x plus five y by itself five times. That's gonna be some huge expression. Well, guess what? We can use Pascal's triangle. Is that not mind boggling and totally awesome? Well, since we're taking this to the fifth power, it's like we're flipping the coin five times. And these are the coefficients of each term and each term represents the possibilities. So we could get five three x's, or we could get four three x's and one five y, or we could get three three x's and two five y's, or two three x's and three five y's, or one three x and four five y's, or finally, five five y's. This will make more sense when I write it out. So our first coefficient is one and we're gonna get five three x's. Our next coefficient is five. That's the number of ways we can get four three x's and one five y. Our next coefficient is 10. That's the number of ways we can get three three x's and two five y's. Are you catching on now? 10 is the same number of ways we can get two three x's and three five y's, and there are five ways we can get one three x and four five y's, and finally, there's just one way to get five five y's. This is called binomial expansion, where this is a binomial expression since it has two terms, you know, by, two, and expansion because we're taking it to the fifth power. Then all you have to do is simplify, which I'm not going to do. But hopefully you found some really cool connections between probability and statistics and algebra. I hope you enjoyed this mini lesson.